Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again. We're bringing you guys a brand new GP overview. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the brand new NVIDIA ASUS GeForce GTX 770 DirectSU 2 OC graphics card. Uh, so as always, we're going to be breaking it down in terms of the topology, the feature set, performance, and kind of general overview uh, where this card sits in the marketplace, what it's going to be bringing the unique to the table, and as well as uh, what's the secret sauce that we've gone ahead and put inside the card. Uh, from there, of course, we're going to cover some of the basic accessories that come included in there and then wrap everything up for you guys. All right guys, so we've gone ahead and cracked open the box and we have three accessories. Uh, pretty straightforward. First and foremost, we have our speed setup guide. So this pretty much references to you all the information on how to actually install your graphics card and some of the overall basic functionality aspects of how to work with the card in terms of installing it. Of course, we have the driver and the utility disc. Make sure to head over to geforce.com to get the latest version of the actual driver package as well as the GeForce Experience software. That's going to be crucial in terms of allowing you to maximize the overall uh, performance as well as over the, the image quality and a large number of your games that you're going to be playing. And of course, here we have our GPU tweak utility, which allows you to tweak and tune the graphics card for voltages, frequencies, and everything in between in terms of the card. Uh, you can always get the latest version directly at support.esus.com. And lastly, for you guys that might be running maybe an older generational power supply, of course, we have an adapter that allows you to go ahead and take uh, the uh, <coughs> your 8-pin connection and go ahead and adapt it to two 6-pin. Now, keep in mind that the card itself is going to require a single 8-pin and a single 6-pin in terms of PCI Express power connections. So with that, let's go ahead and actually take a look at the card itself talk about where it sits in terms of the landscape as well as some of the features and the functionality. Okay guys, so now that we've covered the accessories, let's talk a bit more about the actual GTX 770 in itself. Uh, so this is a, a refresh uh, to that actually replaces the previous generation GTX 670, which was a high-end uh, GPU that was really focused at ultra high 1080p based gaming and even to a degree um, ultra uh, resolutions in terms of 2K resolutions so like 2560 by 1440 or 2560 uh, by 1600 or 3D or even multi panel configurations. So this GPU definitely is once again within that same ballpark but even further proved upon in terms of the performance. Now the actual uh, core itself is still based off the GK104 um, but where one of the significant points of improvement comes in is that there's a significant significant increase in the number of CUDA cores. So the CUDA cores are essentially, if you want to think about it, kind of like the horsepower for the graphics card. The more cores we have, the more capability the card has to be able to process through and be able to provide to you the best level of image quality at the highest resolutions. It pretty much enables uh, the performance aspects of the GPU, as well as, of course, uh, the memory bus. The memory bus here continues to be a very high performance memory bus. On the CUDA core side, we've got 1536, essentially equal to that of the previous generation GTX 680 part along with advancements that NVIDIA has made, such as the integration of the first generation graphics card to ever feature 7 gigahertz enabled memory. Um, and actually, in our testing, we can even go quite past 7 gigahertz in terms of the frequency for the memory. So both of these things allow you to actually have a performance for the card, which is outstanding. If you, know, if you kind of fit this into the landscape for you guys that maybe don't necessarily upgrade every single uh, chipset cycle, in terms of new GPUs, you're getting a pretty extensive upgrade in terms of the performance. So if let's say you guys were running on something like a GTX 570 graphics card, you could be looking at upwards of 65% increase in your overall gaming capability. Not in just in terms of overall frame rate, but even in terms of the reduction in latency. Um, and that's not even to mention the improvements in image quality technologies that you're gonna have available with newer GPUs, whether that's gonna be things like TXXA or FXXA, and things along those lines. So you get a big upgrade for you guys that are looking to kind of focus in at really taking advantage of all the latest game engines that are coming to the market, whether they're just coming right now uh, or they're going to be coming at a later date. Um, so that's really kind of some of the key hallmarks that we have in terms of the performance capability of the part. Uh, in addition to that, we also feature GPU Boost 2.0. So for you guys that might have checked out our video on the GTX Titan, we talked about GPU Boost 2.0, uh, which essentially is an internal uh, architectural aspect of how the card can dynamically increase its clock frequency. It's kind of like if you want to think about it, an automated overclock on the GPU. So this is pretty awesome because in previous generations, it was defined by what was called the power target. And the power target sometimes would vary depending on numerous factors, um, but it necessarily, it would sometimes leave more frequency available, um, but be limited by the 
by the power target that was defined in terms of how it could boost the card up. For this generation, they phased in GPU Boost 2.0, which is actually dependent based on temperature. The advantage that we have with that is, of course, uh, that we're using a fully non-reference cooling solution as well as a fully non-reference PCB design. Uh, in my testing, I've consistently found that boosting actually goes over 1.1 gigahertz. Uh, so that's significantly faster than the baseline frequency of the 770 and even faster than the default consistent boost frequency of a reference GTX 670. So overall, there's quite a number of architectural improvements in the card. Uh, power efficiency is another big factor that you guys want to consider. Now, most of us, when we buy a high-end GPU part like this, we don't necessarily jump out and think, you know, what is my power consumption going to look like? Um, but that's really one of the key advantageous points that we have for this GPU is that, once again, when compared to maybe something like a, a 500 series part, you could be talking 2x in terms of the overall efficiency. So you could be gaining actually performance, but having significantly lower power consumption. Um, so when you kind of keep that in mind that with this kind of card, even for a modern generation kind of high-end system, you could be looking at only about a 600, 650 watt power supply. It's quite impressive that you're gonna be able to have the performance envelope uh, be offered for this card, but a significantly lower uh, amount of power that's being supplied and overall having really great efficiency in terms of your performance to watt. So those are some really cool features. Uh, of course, if you guys want more information, make sure to check out NVIDIA's website. You can get more on the architectural aspects from here. We're going to jump straight into our non-reference aspects of the GTX 770 DirectCU 2. Okay, guys. So here you can see that we have our full non-reference GTX 770. So if we take a look here in terms of the front of the card, you can, of course, see that we have this awesome uh, shroud that, that goes ahead and fixes to the top of the actual heat uh, sink assembly. And of course, here we have two fans denoting, of course, DirectCU 2 would mean that we, of course, have two fans. Now, these fans actually feature our specialized dustproof fan design. So that means that the internal assembly or the hub assembly that's directly underneath uh, this little sticker right here in terms of ASUS means that it's double sealed. So that mitigates the buildup of any type of dust, debris, or dander from getting inside of there and impacting the ability to have this actual fan rotate. And overall, that significantly helps to improve the overall lifespan and ensure the performance and the operation of this product, helping you to have an overall better reliability and a cooler uh, running product more consistent. Uh, so that's a nice touchstone in terms of our design uh, that we offer here as part of the DirectCU, where it's not just about cooling and it's not just about the acoustics, but it's even a, an improvement in terms of the total reliability of the product. Now, in addition to that, of course, uh, we're going to talk about the non-reference design aspects, such as the direct contact copper technology, the heat pipes, and even the, the fully non-reference PCB board, and the power topology, including our DigiPlus power design and our SAP power components. But before we get to that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our display I.O. connectivity and see what we have going there. Okay, so here you can see that we're showing you guys the display output connectivity. And of course, this being a current generation NVIDIA product means it supports four display output configurations. So we have four digital uh, display output options. So two dual link DVI connections. We then have a full size HDMI and then a full size DP. That HDMI not only supports 3D output, but also supports the newest specification of the HDMI protocol. So that means that for upcoming 4K monitors, you would even be able to digitally drive that through that single uh, interface. Interface. So that's a nice, uh, a nice uh, touchstone in terms of our total display output functionality. Now from there, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the back of the card and see some of the exclusive design features that we have on this card. All right, guys, we've gone ahead and moved to the back side of the card. So there's actually still a lot going on here. Uh, one, of course, we continue to have this uh, really beautiful, just nice uh, full full metal backplate that we have here on the back of the card. Now this actually helps to maximize some heat conduction from the back plane of the card and helps to bring it up and exhaust through the back side. Um, in addition to that, it actually also helps to provide a bit of rigidity and minimize torsion on the card itself and overall help to maintain the card uh, more straight. And this is going to be key essentially over time uh, because sometimes you can have the PCB board actually have a level of torsion that can affect the actual substrate material, the PCB, and you can actually have traces. Uh, that over a period of time can kind of expand and contract and this can actually cause failure over time. So it's a subtle touch but one that not only looks great but also provides improved reliability as well as improved performance. Now in addition to that we also have some other connections you're going to see here such as your SLI uh, connections and that allows you to go ahead and run in multiple GPUs. For this graphics card that's awesome because the card continues to offer outstanding uh, SLI scaling. In our testing we've seen uh, between 75% to almost 90% plus in terms of scaling in multiple GPU configurations. So that's very impressive and of course really a hallmark of the design architecture that we have uh, with this GPU. Now, 
If you take a look over here in this little back corner of the card, we've got a couple of really nice additions for this uh, graphics card. One is going to be direct voltage read points. So for you guys that are overclocking, kind of tweaking, tuning the card, you really want to have that hardware layer of confidence at knowing specifically what voltages are uh, running through the graphics card. You can go ahead and use your digital multimeter, go ahead and run them to there, and you'll have that specific information. In addition to that, here on the top, we have LEDs that go ahead and let us know uh, whether we actually have power actively connected and being provided to the card. If so, it'll go ahead and light up red, excuse me, uh, green. And if there's an issue in terms of actually a missing power connection or power is not directly flowing through, then they'll actually light up red. So, of course, in terms of the standard connectivity, PCI Express by 16 electrical connection required Gen 3 interface. Uh, of course, that's going to pretty much work on all active chipsets. So from there, we're going to go ahead and actually uh, take this card apart, take a look at the heatsink and the fan assembly a little bit more, and we're also going to take a look at the full non-reference PCB and the power componentry. Okay guys, so we've gone ahead and disassembled the card. As you can see right here, we now have the full uh, body in terms of the heatsink and the fan assembly separated from the PCB and the VRM assembly. Of course, only four screws to go ahead and do that, so a very, very simple process. Now once we go ahead and take a look at the inside here, we can see that we've got a lot more going on. We have a huge uh, multi-finned uh, dissipation heatsink here, which really gives us great heat dissipation capabilities. When you tie that in with the high performance uh, heat pipe implementation that's also direct contact and design really gives us a huge amount of cooling capability. And this is really what allows the car to have such outstanding temperature performance. Now the reference design, which is actually utilizing a vapor chamber implementation, is quite solid, but under load you're going to be generally looking at about 80 C in terms of the temperature. Our card, even running at a higher clock speed, is averaging between about 62 to 65 C. So that's a significant drop in terms of the thermal performance. And keep in mind, even when overclocking the card, you're still going to be running significantly cooler than even the reference based design. Now, of course, if you ever want to maximize uh, the cooling performance, you can fully go into our advanced uh, GPU tweak fan controls and be able to modify the adjustments to be able to go ahead and have it uh, ramp up at, at different corresponding temperature targets. That's all entirely and customizable up to you. Um, so, of course, you can see here that we do have that direct contact technology that we've talked about where we have the copper heat pipes. And some people always wonder what's the differential in the color. And the main difference is that e, these heat pipes that are weaved into the actual heat, uh, heat sink assembly are nickel plated and that's to minimize any type of oxidation and help to ensure the best long-term reliability and performance for the heatsink assembly. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual PCB board itself. All right, guys, so we've gone ahead and uh, finished taking a look at the back. Now here we're at the inside of the GTX 6, excuse me, 770 a Direct CU2 OC graphics card. So, of course, this is a full non-reference power implementation. So that means that we have a custom PCB that includes all the power topology and the power components. So uh, if we round out and take a look at what actually we mean by non-reference power components, that's going to be this entire section here. So first off the bat, of course, you can see our SAP labeling, and that stands for Super Alloy power. And so super alloy power is a special internal process that we've developed to create a, a custom alloy based mixture uh, for the inductors that allow them to provide higher levels of amperage output, superior thermal efficiency, and overall all metrics of imp uh, performance improved upon, really giving you guys the best quality components you can get on the market. Uh, really helping you to provide you confidence not only at stock levels of operation, but of course if you're pursuing overclocking, to give you that superior level of reliability through the best components that you can get on the market. Now, now, we also have other components that are part of the Super Alloy Power Initiative. So that's going to be our Super Alloy Capacitors, which you can see all here. Now the Super Alloy Caps also have the benefit of being rated for 5K rated operation. Now the majority of other capacitors you're going to see on standard graphics card in the industry are only 2K rated. Um, what that means is that they have a 2,000 hour rated lifespan at 105C versus our cards at 105C of 5,000 hours. So that's considerably over what you're going to see on competitors' cards and the rest of the industry. In terms of the power topology layout, when even compared to the reference solution, we have a higher level of uh, phases or inductors that we have incorporated on the board with the reference design being five, ph uh, five phases with one phase for memory. And we have an eight phase uh, for our, our GPU and two phases for the memory. And you can easily count that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that would be eight phases for the primary GPU. 
and then we would have two phases dedicated for the memory. And that, of course, uh, helps to provide a higher level of power output for improved stability at overclocking. Speaking once again in relation to overclocking, we round out another critical component that helps to aid in that, and the last item that we have for super alloy power, which is our super alloy MOSFETs. And so these are ultra high performance MOSFETs which have superior thermal efficiency and superior power output. In addition to that, we take great pride in giving you guys a great quality design, and we're also enhancing that with what you see right here, and this is going to be the VRM heatsink, which would go over these MOSFETs. Now, the MOSFETs are the hottest part of the actual entire VRM assembly, and the hotter they get, the lower the efficiency, and there's the potential of reducing the stability of our overclock. So it's critical that we go ahead and help to aid in your overclocking experience by giving you superior heat dissipation by including a VRM heatsink that, of course, receives airflow from our dual fan design that we have as part of our DCU heatsink assembly. So overall, that gives you some perspective in terms of the special customized power solution. So with that, let's go ahead and put this card back together and wrap things up. All right, guys, so wrapping things up, uh, like always, we've given you guys a pretty good breakdown here in terms of some of the new uh, core architectural uh, features and functions of the new GTX 770 GPU, as well as we've talked about our non-reference design aspects, whether it's going to be our DigiPlus power design, our customized heat sink and fan assembly uh, as part of our DC2 uh, cooling implementation, or overall kind of all those exclusive features that we have, uh, things along the lines in terms of you know our dustproof fan design, our LEDs, our VGA hot wire, or other things along those lines. So in terms of the considerations that you might have at where this fits uh, if you're going to be building a system at this stage in the game is going to be that once again if you're focused at a high level of gameplay and you're really interested at kind of playing a game the way it's meant to be played in terms of the image quality being essentially the same level of what the game developers intended it to be this is going to be an outstanding GP for you guys so if the focus is at 1080p gaming even 2560 based gaming you want to be able to keep on all those advanced feature sets enabled whether they're you know depth of field ambulant occlusion, specialized physics-based processing, you want to be able to take advantage of heavy tessellation, all those things you're definitely going to be able to take advantage of with this type of GPU part. So as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, feedback you'd love uh, to drop to us here on the page, uh, feel free to do so in the comment section. If you want to hit us up in another way, you can go ahead and check us out at our North American Facebook page or our North American Twitter pages. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure and like it, and of course, uh, please make sure and subscribe. So as always, thank you.